We are in a dark experiment right now, aren't we? You know, there are a lot of stories told across the world about the hybridization of species. And we get this right from the beginning, don't we? With ancient mythology, monsters, chimeric creatures, Nephilim giants. Even today we hear of the harrowing modern age tales of experimentation involving the hybridization of humans, animals, insects, and plants. And I am talking about the hybridization of any combination of those species. Aside from that, we have the hair-raising reports of several experiments that most people would consider to be immoral, even evil. From multi-headed dogs to underground base insectoids. And the whole time our government acts like there is no underground. So even if they tell the public, yes, there have been attempts to experiment with this and that, but we've made laws to govern that so everyone can rest easy. What does that mean? The experimentation has ceased? Or has it just been moved underground? How many of you have heard of the Demikov Double Dog? How Vladimir Demikov actually made a two-headed dog. Though it's hard to believe that Soviet scientist Vladimir Demikov actually made a two-headed dog, these surreal photos are the proof. And I won't be showing those photos here, but you can pull up the article if you'd like. One thing to understand about this is that around this time in the 50s, and going back even further than that, head transplants, this was something that was experimented with at the time. Not widely, but it was heard of, you see. Not with just the same species of animal, but they would try to mix and match animals as well. Now you are probably wondering, okay, so what is the goal here? What would these doctors, these scientists want to accomplish by doing this? I don't know. Immortality? In the 1920s, Dr. Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov carried out a series of experiments involving artificially inseminating female chimpanzees with human sperm. Later in 1929, there was an attempt to organize an experiment involving impregnating human women with ape sperm. The Soviet government decided to exile him after that, and he soon died of a stroke a couple of years later. Now, I know there are none of you who are stupid enough to believe that in order to create a human-ape hybrid, all they have to do is have sex. He sat there and thought to himself, Hey, well, my chimp won't get pregnant with human sperm. I've got it. I'll get a woman pregnant with chimp sperm. Yeah, that kind of thinking will get you removed from the premises pretty quickly. So when you hear stories like that, two-headed dog and the human Z, you think to yourself, why would these mad scientists use simple, generic, juvenile, shortcut methods to achieve their goal? It's like they put no thought into these experiments. It's almost like they just wanted to play around with bodies. They just wanted to defile something or someone. 
And that is what this all comes down to. The defilement of God's creations. It is the oldest and one of the most efficient fallen angel and demonic tactics used. To this day, even after the birth of Christ, the devil is still trying to ruin the human species. He will do anything to get us to be non-human. Changing human genetics is key here. You know, during the last days of the Nazi party, you had scientists such as Joseph Mengele, for example, who were obsessed with this type of experimentation. But for him, his obsession was with twins. If you were a twin and showed up at a concentration camp on his watch, you would most likely end up dead and your autopsy would be the experiment. If you were lucky. If you weren't lucky, you would be experimented on almost daily. You would have your blood drawn daily and you would have to undergo organ surgery without anesthesia. They even went as far as to poison one twin just to see the effects on the other twin. If nothing happened, then they would just kill the other twin and examine the two bodies after. Pretty gruesome stuff. Now, of course, we're not designed to be mixed with anything and everything. Animals as well. And the greatest challenge to science is trying to get that human gene to cleave to whatever it is they want to hybridize. And we are built with a failsafe, so if anything does come out of such an experiment, the offspring would most likely be incapable of reproduction, so they would not be able to multiply. When I look at Genesis 6 and the book of Enoch, I understand that God allowed for these angels to come down to earth and take women. These were the very angels that were put in place as watchers. They were allowed to have offspring with women. But of course, that was taken away. They can't do that now. But they are still trying. Not only are they trying to make humans easier to possess, they have been making bodies or vessels to inhabit so that they can walk among us. What we are going to see more and more of is this science to create chimeric hybrids under the guise of improving the quality of life around the world. This is always their excuse to do these things, folks. Creating goats that produce spider silk, cows that produce milk with human proteins. They have done several experiments where they have raised glow-in-the-dark pigs, dogs, sheep, fish, etc. Glow-in-the-dark animals. Speaking of which, I'd like to touch on something that I haven't really had a chance to discuss, and that is this CRISPR technology. A Chinese scientist claims to have genetically engineered babies. Here's what editing DNA means. In 2011, scientists created glow-in-the-dark cats. The researchers took a gene from a glowing jellyfish and inserted it into the unfertilized eggs of house cats. It was a neat trick, but they had a bigger goal in mind. They also made the cats more likely to be resistant to a feline form of AIDS by, again, manipulating their DNA. And cats aren't that different than humans. In fact, we share around 90% of our DNA with them. Interesting, right? So why can't we engineer humans in the same way? Well, we can. Engineer ourselves to be resistant to life-threatening illnesses, that is. In fact, one scientist claims that he's genetically engineered two babies using a revolutionary tool called CRISPR. But what exactly is a CRISPR baby anyway? I'll tell you what it is. Now, CRISPR is an acronym for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. Yeah, I know. What, what, and what? CRISPR is a technology that is based on a bacterial defense system. 
They call it CRISPR Case 9 genome editing technology. This can target sections of genetic code or DNA at specific locations for editing. They can now use CRISPR Case 13 to edit RNA. The way the bacteria system works is that it destroys any enemy invaders like viruses and it keeps a memory bank of past viral invaders. So they can take this Case 9 enzyme and use it to find genetic mutations and other genes that are linked to disease. And they can then cut that DNA sequence. Other molecules are then released to then repair that section. And thus, you have effectively edited the genome. And if you do this to an embryo, it passes along to every other cell that is produced, which will pass on from generation to generation, which is one of the big reasons why human gene editing is a big no-no. The Chinese scientists that used CRISPR to produce the first set of GMO twins did so to make them HIV resistant by cutting out a certain gene associated with the infection. The problem is, what else does that gene that was cut out do? What else is it linked to? It's called the CCR5 gene, and apparently it is a docking station for HIV. The Dr. He Jiangku cut the gene out of the twins so that they would be genetically resistant to HIV and other infections. However, however, this comes out of an abstract from biomedcentral.com on cell bioscience. Multiple publications have reported unexpected off-target mutations generated by CRISPR case 9. Although one retracted publication demonstrated few unexpected mutational events, one study found rare but notable mutations. Several others found large deletions, while another found unexplainable complex deletions and insertions in mice generated by CRISPR case 9. As such, the CCR5 twins need to be monitored both for possible known effects such as an increased susceptibility to influenza infection, abnormal bone growth, and other immunological conditions, and also require close monitoring of their general growth and development for unanticipated effects. So you know folks, these are some brief examples I am giving you here. What do you think is going to happen with all this constant genetic engineering of everything that exists I mean everything we get our hands on I don't think there's anything that we haven't tried to manipulate yet you know what's going to happen everything will have to be destroyed again because almost everything has been defiled they want to make us non-human so that we don't have a chance the devil wants to sabotage God's creation so that it stands apart from the original Adam. So that way, if God wants to continue his plan, he'll have to wipe us all out and start all over again. But, of course, God can correct those gene edits. He can reverse all that. The devil knows that, but most people don't. And so even when we have all this going on, I mean, who can keep up with the science? They keep altering everything they can legally. But even with all this going on, the plan doesn't change. I don't know if we are going to see an entire race of GMO people, although it has happened before in the days of Jared. I think this time, given the state of things, their plans were cut a bit short. And so they activated their contingency GMO human plan. It's what I've been calling, quote unquote, the experiment. There is more to come, so stay tuned. Be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. You can follow me on Instagram at jwoodward. And until next time, folks, as always, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all very soon.